everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week we are going to take a quick break from Cinderella and do a whole new project for Pride. I am fully in support of all LGBTQIA plus people out there and I wanted to show my support by making a wonderful happy rainbow dress and I found the perfect fabric that inspired this project and so this is actually going to be a dress that I'm going to wear for an upcoming Disney trip as well. So this dress is going to be kind of a multi-purpose dress. I am going to wear it for Pride and to celebrate Pride for my upcoming Disney trip, but also kind of to redo in a way a past project because I have used this pattern before. But before we get too much into that, let me show you the fabric because that is really what spurred me on to this whole journey and made me realize that I really need a pride dress in my life. This is the fabric. From far away, it might just look like a wonderful rainbow stripe cotton, but from up close, you can see that it's actually made out of tons of little Mickeys. And I just love that and it will go so perfectly with my Pride Mickey ears that I got last year, which look like this. So I'm super, super excited to wear this both this month for Pride and then next month and in future months for future Disney trips. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be kind of redoing, remaking a pattern that I have made once before a very long time ago. In fact, I made this in what I would consider kind of like my first year of costuming, and it is a reprint Vintage Vogue pattern 8789. Looks like that. And this is the dress that I made oh so long ago. So this dress has never fit me correctly. It's always been a little bit too large in the waist, too low in the waist. Also, as you can tell, this color is not a good color for me. So it'll be so wonderful to remake this in a bright, beautiful rainbow print. And the other part was that when I made this pattern, I didn't really know how to alter sewing patterns. And so now with this new knowledge, 10 years later, I am going to be able to alter this pattern both to fit me and to fit my style a little bit better. Because as you can maybe see from this, this has kind of a just off the shoulder, almost cap sleeve look here. And I don't like that. So I haven't quite decided yet if this is going to be another jumper dress, because as you know, if you've seen my other videos, I am super into jumper dresses or if I'm going to go ahead and make this with sleeves. I kind of sketched out a sleeved version on here, right here, and I'm kind of liking that look, so I may do that. But I'm excited to just try this pattern again with this new fabric and with my new better skills. Speaking of skills, let's jump over to sponsor Rebecca really quickly for a little bit of information about Skillshare. Thank you, Sewing Rebecca. Sponsor Rebecca here, and today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. If you haven't yet heard of Skillshare, it is an online learning community for creative and curious people. On Skillshare, you can find thousands of inspiring classes on topics including photography, art, web design, even how to improve your Instagram presence, and so many more. Personally, I have been using Skillshare lately in an attempt to improve my productivity. So I've been taking classes like Productivity Today, Managing Attention in the Digital Age, taught by Kevin Siskar. I have to be honest with you, I started to try to take other productivity classes and I kept getting distracted. But this 34 minute class is literally about how to not get distracted in order to be more productive and Oh my gosh, it was so helpful and it helped me to get so much done. Skillshare classes are meant for your schedule. Like Kevin's productivity class, many of the classes are under an hour and you can pause, rewind, or rewatch classes as often as you like. And the great news is that the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. After that, an annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Use my link down in the description to get your free trial of Skillshare today and unlock your limitless creative potential. And now, back to Sewing Rebecca. 
Thank you, sponsor Becca. So the first thing now is that I haven't even looked at this pattern in the last 10 years. So I'm going to pull out this pattern, look it over, see what needs to be altered and tweaked to go into my initial mock-up because yeah, that's right. I don't even think I did a mock-up for this dress when I made it. And we're going to go ahead and mock up this pattern with a narrower shoulder line here so that it can either have sleeves added or just be a jumper dress. So let's get sewing. I cannot use my sewing table because this creature just like jumped up here as I opened up my camera. So well, anyway, this is what we're looking at here. I've gone and I've like done a bunch of alterations to the initial pattern, just kind of based on like holding it up to myself and drawing in new lines. So for example, I am increasing the length over here in the side seam, not increasing the length in the center back. That's my usual kind of sway back adjustment. Honestly, I kind of feel like I won't need even this much in the side seam. I'm also increasing the size in the side seam. This is a really sloped back seam here and the waist and bust just don't fit where I'm at. So I need to extend the waist, not the bust in the back piece here. I have a pretty narrow back. So honestly, I don't often need to extend this here. I'm also way narrowing out the straps here. So this is my new line here for the arms eye where the edge of the strap is going to be. And Dora, Dora, not on the pattern. You're going to rip it. Okay. And this is my new line for the back because the back of the neck of this dress really goes down super, super low and I just don't really like it. So the jumper dress that I'm wearing right now, this is where the back of the neck hits. So I'm just going to change that line. I feel like this is going to be super, super weird and I'm going to regret this, but I'm doing this for the mock-up anyway. I will wind up adding the facing back in, I think, because this pattern has built-in facings. That's what this section is right here. I don't know that I love it. Like normally I would just do binding, bias binding, something like that, but it has the facings in there. I don't know. I may or may not leave that in. I might cut it out, but for now I'm going to add the facing in like that. So that's the back piece. And then the front piece, I was able to actually just pin out the part that I didn't need for the facing. So to make it narrower here up at the shoulder. So this is the facing. I just have to extend the length. This is going to get extended by one inch up front because the bust point was just nowhere near where my bust was hitting. This little X was like where, you know, the additional basically that I would need for the bust point. So that is one inch from the bust point. So I'm adding one inch to the top here, adding a little bit to the arms eye vertically here. And then I'm adding to the bust here. Dora, she's trying to eat my ears. Dora, these are my ears. You can wear them. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm adding a little bit up here, more this way, and then more here down at the waist this way. And I'm adding down here in the front, I'm adding 1.25 inches down, straight down. So, cause that is my usual kind of bust adjustment to add extra length. I always need extra length in the front, don't need it in the back. I don't know what's going on there. And then this is my new arms eye line here. So lots and lots of changes to this pattern. We're going to see what exactly the mock-up does. It might be really super weird and not work at all, but we shall see. I have the mock-up, first mock-up, because there will be more done. And as you can see, there are some issues going on or really issues going on on this mock-up and I knew that there were going to be issues before I even put this on because the facing the built-in facing in the back did not work at all like I actually had to undo the seam of the facing here and also at the center back because it wasn't the right angle of the face like of where the seam met it wasn't big enough here and it was too big in the center back. So yeah, so I have a feeling, I think I'm gonna just not do the facing, I don't know. Like it does make a really nice clean point right here, but also obviously this point is not working. So the straps right now are wanting to fall off my shoulders. Um, and I think that is mostly just because it is too 
like big here and in the center back especially and so I think really I need to curve this seam so that this section right here is taken out and that will actually cause this to sit farther on the shoulders and same with in the back and the back it's obviously way worse I mean that is just huge I did I think I mentioned when I was showing you the pattern I did raise the neckline in the back which was why the facing wound up being so so off so yeah definitely some stuff to look at I think the darts are kind of okay like it's becoming a little bit pointy but also it's too large I actually did up both side seams I did up all of the seams and figured I would pull it on over my head to try it on and it's too large. So this pattern says that the size 22, which is the largest that it goes to, has a 37 inch waist. And I'm like about a 40 to 41 inch waist. So I added four inches to the waist. But apparently I needn't have bothered with most of that because there is probably close to four inches too much on this waist. So if you are working with this pattern and it seems like it's going to be too small with those finished measurements, because that was a 37 inch finished measurement, that's a lie. It's not going to be too small. It's going to be just fine. Don't add anything to it. The bust also, oh, actually, I hadn't even realized how roomy the bust is. Oh my God, the bust is humongous. So yeah, I think I'm just going to take literally two inches out of the sides, both sides down. And then I'm going to fix this and fix the center back. The good thing is I should be able to do all of this with this mock-up. I shouldn't need to cut out another one. And actually the length in the front feels great. The length in the back is humongous. And the weird thing is I knew that from the pattern, but I was like, that can't be true. It can't be that long in the back because I held up the pattern piece to the back and it felt like it was about an inch and a half or so too long and I was like no can't be too long that's just silly yeah it's too long so um yeah the sides are also too long so I'm just gonna go around make a whole lot of marks make a whole bunch of pinning stuff out and fix all of this and show you what it looks like then so I took a bunch of it in and really I just did it in the center front and center back and then I cut off the excess at uh, the waist though maybe not quite enough Hopefully enough, we'll see. But it's now it's doing a really weird thing here. I don't know if you can tell this. And I think that a lot of this is because the facing is coming down into quite a big point right there. And I think it's causing bulk, but also this curve needs to be helped. So I'm really tempted to scrap the facing because this like it's just causing more problems than I feel like it will fix so I might just scrap the facing the back is also still sticking out a bit but most of it is way better the only other thing is like the darts are definitely ending at the wrong place in the back honestly I feel like they're way too narrow also I think I think I need to spread the darts out a little bit in the back because like right now I don't know if you can see this but the darts are right here like so so narrow and they got even narrower when I took two inches I believe out of the center back so yeah I think I need to make them go out a little bit there and then just fix whatever is going on here but I feel like maybe once I fix that that it's gonna fit right I'm just really tempted to cut off the facing in doing that because I feel like again it's just causing problems so yeah, I think I'm gonna scrap the facing and just bind the neckline. Yeah. Well, I still don't know if we're exactly there, but I think we are super, super close. So I'm pretty happy with how it's looking now. I went ahead and I tapered in from about here up. I feel like it's still giving me a little point here, but I think maybe that's just because I have a button right here on my blouse underneath. So I'm hoping that's the issue. I will have to round out the darts because I always find that that's what I have to do to make darts look right. So I have to do that. And there might be 
a tiny pinch more that needs to happen there. But again, super, super close. Back is looking nice now. It's laying right. The darts are moved out to here and they're way taller and the back of the neckline's looking great. Waist is feeling really quite good. I think all the way around. It's hard to tell the back maybe tiny, tiny bit long, but I think we're really, really close. So I am happy with this, which means that tomorrow when it is not my bedtime, we can go ahead and cut out my rainbow stripe Mickey fabric. Good night. So I wanted to show you just how quite different these wound up being the final pieces from the mock-up versus what it originally started off as. You can see just how wide that shoulder was. I mean, obviously I did take off the facing um, and then this is the weird shaping that happened with the bottom here. So, and then also with the top being way longer up here. So yeah, definitely a little funky. The back is even more interesting. So let's look at that. This is the back. So as you can see, I didn't even really know where to line this up because it's different on like every side. I kind of lined it up with the center back there, but yeah, I mean, so, so different everywhere you look on the back. I did go ahead and I took my mock-up pieces and I trace them onto pattern paper so that I could just have for the future like a bias cut because I don't know if I mentioned this but this is on the bias you can see the green line on the pattern here so that means that where it matches up here at the center back and center front it is on the bias so yeah now I will have a pattern for a v-neck and v-back bias cut bodice with one dart that I can potentially use for other things. I mean, I doubt that I'll make this exact dress again, but like it might be nice to have that kind of a pattern for the future. So now what I'm doing is I'm laying my pieces out on the rainbow Mickey fabric. I'm doing it this side up, like the sides don't matter right now as long as I make two opposite sides, but I'm doing it this side up to begin with. And this one I'm just kind of arbitrarily like laying in the corner. I did make the conscious decision that I want the yellow Mickeys to face up, the yellow and red. So hopefully that's what's gonna happen by me laying it out this way, because this is the upside and their ears face this way. So I figured they were kind of some of the boldest colors and it'd be nice if they face up. So it's every other. So like purple and green and orange will face down. And so I'm just laying it out here in the corner. Now I did wind up with a little bit of a curve to my center front. So I don't know how perfectly everything's going to chevron. I'm hoping it'll work out well, but basically I'm going to cut out this piece and then I'm going to use the rainbow piece to flip it over and mirror that. I have to find a place on the stripes to mirror that because obviously I want a nice chevron in front. I want them to be mirrored. So I have to do that both for the fronts and then also same sort of thing for the backs, just arbitrarily laying one side and then matching it with the other side. So best laid plans, right? As it turns out, because this isn't like a mirrored pattern and it is a directional pattern, I actually can't perfectly match this pattern on the bias or so it would seem because basically what I can do is I can either match the stripes or I can match the direction of Mickey's ears. Yep, so obviously stripes are going to be the way more obvious thing and I want them to match. So that means that one side of the bodice, the ears are going to like all the red ears are going to face up. The other side of the bodice, all the red ears are going to face down. And um, that's just what it's going to have to be. But hopefully I at least cut this right. The nice thing is you can super see this pattern through the bodice. So this is the back side here, obviously, and then that's the front. And now I can go ahead, I've matched everything, and I can go ahead and cut out the other side, then do the same thing for the backs. I got into the swing of things and realized I haven't recorded in a little bit. So as you can see, I have been working on the bodice today. And so far, what's happened since I last showed you where I was cutting everything out was that I actually used the mock-up, which was cotton sateen, as an interlining. Now this is not part of the pattern. This is just something that I decided to do because this cotton fabric is, you know, a little bit on the thin side. It's like a lightweight quilting cotton. And so I've backed it with the sateen and I did that with each piece individually. So there's four bodice pieces. Each piece was backed with the sateen and then I surged the edges. And that is how I flatline is I surged the edges. 
And then I went to start assembling. So as you can see, this center is creating a really nice chevron here. It's doing the same thing on the back. Uh, luckily, everything was cut correctly, so the patterns did match. But as you can see, like blue Mickey faces down and then blue Mickey faces up. And there's just no way to get around that if you want the pattern to match in that chevron with the colors. And I thought that was way more important because it's harder to tell which direction the Mickey is facing. I also did the darts here. I made sure to kind of curve the top of the dart, so hopefully that will fit better. But I have those darts all sewn in and I have pressed the front piece, haven't pressed the back piece yet, but it looks otherwise the same except with a higher neckline and with less dart shaping. So that's where I am currently. I am going to do up the side seams and the shoulder seams next because I've decided since the mock-up fit fine without a zipper, I'm not doing a zipper. I was really hoping to get to the skirt cutting tonight, but it is not going to happen because I should have already gone to bed. <laughs> but at least the bodice will be pretty much done. So what I guess is probably a good sign is that it doesn't actually fit Lady Jane, but it is all done up on the side. And if you notice, the blue stripe actually matches both on the side and also on the shoulder, which I find really interesting. Obviously, it's the opposite print, so it does wind up going in the opposite direction. But it's kind of cool that the blue matches and like carries through. I guess that's neat. So anyway, the bodice is, I mean, done-ish. Like obviously, it doesn't have the finishing on the neckline. And then on the arm size, it doesn't have either the finishing or the sleeves, depending on which I do. I'm definitely leaning towards making it a jumper dress, but I think I will have to wait and see when I try it on probably tomorrow after has a skirt on and just see like how much pattern there is because there's going to be a lot of rainbow and I kind of feel like having a blouse underneath like a white or solid color blouse underneath is going to really help to break up just how much pattern this is likewise I'll probably go with a contrast belt I'm not sure what color but some sort of contrast I don't know that I love like what's happening with the darts but there's no way to avoid that but you see this sort of pattern switch where the darts are happening but overall I think it's Super cute. I'm loving that V chevron. I think it is just perfect. And I'm excited to do the skirt tomorrow. Can we just talk about how cute this looks for a second with like the ears and everything ready to go already too. Also, you can't see this. This is below the bottom of the frame, but she is still wearing, as in Lady Jane, is still wearing the pink striped dress. And also underneath it, I have this little alterations project that I'm going to do for myself, which was this thrifted skirt that is like pink with multicolor sequins on it and that is sticking out the bottom of the stripes and so she is just a party and I love it. Anyway, <laughs> back to actual sewing. So now that the bodice is basically done, I mean it just needs the finishing on it, it's time to start on the skirts. And last night I did check just like how much fabric I have left. I checked by measuring out 32 and a half inches four times because I have found that my ideal skirt length is 31 inches. And therefore with a one inch hem and a half inch seam allowance at the waist, 32 and a half inches is like the ideal cut length for me. So I measured that to see just to make sure I could get four panels of it because this skirt does call for four panels. It calls for four rectangular panels. Like it's one of those patterns when you don't know why they even put a pattern in because it's literally like a rectangle. But the weird thing about this pattern is that this is 35 inches wide. I don't even remember if I measured the length. I think it's almost about what I was looking for anyway, but the skirt is supposed to have a three inch deep hem. And I do have that on this pink stripe one. And I do like the weight and the heft that it provides. The trade-off is of course with a three inch hem, you have to hand sew the hem there is no way that you can machine sew it. And I would kind of love to finish this project quicker rather than not quicker. So I've decided that the compromise is that I'm just going to literally take however much fabric I have left because it looked like I had maybe two inches extra beyond that like 32 and a half. I'm just gonna take it and divide it into four panels. The other thing that I was trying to do is to decide if I do want the skirt panels to be flared or not instead of rectangular like the pattern. I do like the gathered waist here though it can be a little bit bulky, but if you've seen my channel recently with those pinafore dresses, you'll know that I love a gathered circle skirt. 
Now, a circle skirt is out of the question for this fabric. A, I don't have enough fabric to do that. And B, stripes in a circle skirt just never really work because they will wind up flipping and turning over and it won't be stripey. So that's kind of why this is meant for rectangular panels as opposed to flared panels. However, the idea of having like a little bit of flare and getting those chevrons in there, that might be scrumptious. And it also is playing with the thing that this is a 35 inch wide panel. The fabric's like about 42 inches, 44 inches, something like that. I haven't actually measured it, but it's your standard cotton with fabric. And so my thought process right now is, why don't I cut out four equal panels that are 35 inches across at the top, but go to the full width of the fabric at the bottom? So we're really not talking about much of a flare here, just enough that when I spin, there might be a little bit of spin. And I think that that would be enjoyable. Cause I know like when I spin in this, it really doesn't do anything. It's a rectangle. Like it's just, it's the same at the bottom as it is at the top. It doesn't floof and I like floof. So I think that's my plan is to go with the 35 inch at the top, the full width at the bottom. And because of that, I am probably not going to put my seams where it says in the original pattern. The original pattern has you do front and back seam and side seams because it lines up with the side zipper. I've already cut the side zipper, so I don't need to line up with a side zipper. I do obviously still want seams somewhere in this area for pockets, but I'm perfectly fine with having them be here and having two seams here and two seams on the back sides here, as opposed to perfectly lined up on the side. Like this is still a fine pocket place. I just have to remind myself when I'm wearing the dress that my pockets are not right here. So that's my plan. I'm going to cut out four equal panels, all that have a slight flare to the hem. And I'm also going to cut out my four pocket pieces, which I have excess left from like where I cut out the bodice up at the top. So plenty of room for matched pockets, which is awesome. And I'm going to get all that cut out and sew it together and see what it looks like. So I realized as I was cutting out the skirt panels, luckily I had only cut two at that point, that I would need to also do two of the skirt panels upside down, like as far as the Mickeys go, because if I wanted to get a chevron where it like chevroned perfectly with a rainbow, then that's what I would need to do because of the whole pattern swatch thing. So I should, I think, get a perfect chevron on each seam but every other skirt is going to have like purple mickeys upside down purple mickeys right side up so i think that's what's going to happen doesn't this look odd i wasn't sure if i was liking just how gathered this was going to be considering this is actually about 170 inches being gathered into my like 40 inch waist so yeah it's a lot <laughs> that's getting gathered in there so i decided i would put together the three back panels, if you will, of this skirt, because we've got one here, one that's centered over the back seam, and then one on the other side. And I would put them together and gather them up and see how I felt before doing anything that involved like adding the pockets, because these would be very easy to just like take out fabric, taper it narrower at the top, and then not have to mess with pockets. So anyway, I gathered it up and I think I like how it's looking actually. I do kind of wonder if it's not really as full as I want. Like you can't even really tell where the chevrons are. They did work. There's one. It worked really nicely, but like you can't even see it because it just kind of blends in with everything else. So yeah, but I think it'll be cute. I think the gathering looks nice how you get this bunched in rainbow effect. I think that's really cute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pockets on this piece and on the other piece on the other side and put the pockets on this front piece, do up the pockets and then gather the front and then attach it to the bodice. And obviously in doing up the pockets, I would also be doing up the side seams. I'm going to get to it. Okay, since it's been five or six months at least since I last talked about pockets on how to do them on this channel, I'll give you a little bit. So the pocket gets seamed to the skirt, the side of the skirt. In this case, I'm doing one front panel with pockets on either side. Generally, you'd probably put them a little farther back, but I didn't want to seam right down the middle. So the pocket is getting seamed here. This is a three eighths inch seam allowance though, whereas everything else that I'm doing is a half inch. This one's only a three eighth and you'll see why shortly. So once 
once that is sewn, you press the seam out towards the edge so that this doesn't like fold in or anything. And then you will go ahead and you'll lay the seam that connects here. You'll lay that, which also has the pocket bag on it, face down on top of this like so. With the pocket bags now laying on top of each other, right sides facing together, you are going to pin around the whole outside, starting about right here, pin around, round, 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 and then pin down the length of the skirt side. You also want to make a mark like about this high up from the bottom. That's what, like inch and a half, two inches, somewhere in there. And also just keep a mental note that you'll want to have like a mental mark about a quarter inch below the half inch seam allowance. And what those are is you're going to seam up just a little bit past, like to that mark, so that your pocket opening is not the entire length of the pocket you want it to go past. So basically once you have all that pinned, you are then going to sew from about like three quarters of an inch down here up around all here. I do generally do a three inch seam allowance on here just because I like big pockets. And all the way up here and then up here just that little bit, one and a half inches or so. And then all the way down the seam. Now over here on this part of this, I do like a three eighths inch over here, but this part over here is back to that half inch because you want this seam that you're doing on the skirt to be outside of the seam here on the pocket so that you don't see that seam. That also helps to prevent you from seeing like the fold, the crease of the pocket where the seam comes together. So anyway, that's how all of that works with pockets. There's no zippers in this one, so it's nice and easy. I think recently I've done just mostly with zippers, so that's why I thought I'd give you a quick overview how to do pockets. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Once you have sewn your seams and your pocket is all installed, you press this bit down here open and then you press the pocket bit up here you press it so that the bag of the pocket goes towards the front of the skirt. So basically when you do that, I haven't pressed this one yet, but when you do that, you should wind up with like a little bit, see how the green here, because that's the front part here, see how that is over? You should wind up with that like kind of lapping over just a little bit. I'll show you what that looks like when it's pressed in just a second. It looks like this. So I normally press this top part where the pocket actually is. I press this from the front because it's just easier. Like I don't really care what it looks like on the inside, but I want this to look super nice and clean. And there is that peekaboo pocket right in there. Look at all those cute Mickeys. All right, so now that the pockets are done, I can finish gathering this up. I did run gathering stitches on the front panel here. I can finish gathering this up and sew this to the bodice part, matching up the center front and center back and right sides together, of course, and just sew it on machine. Oh my gosh, you guys are getting really close and I am loving how this is looking. So one thing I realized as I was working on, I think the skirt or attaching the skirt to the bodice, something like that, is that I had still been waffling about jumper versus dress, you know, sleeves versus not basically. And then I realized I didn't leave any extra fabric to cut sleeves. So that makes this question a whole lot easier there are not going to be sleeves. The other thing that makes this easy is, I mean, I put it on just now, obviously, over just the little red sweater that I was wearing earlier and grabbed a matching red belt. And that is an adorable look. And I feel like it really breaks up the rainbow where it needs to be broken up so that it's not all of a sudden in your face, like, oh my God, I'm a rainbow dress. It's just like, whoa, what a rainbow dress. So different, uh, you know, different feeling there. It's not so screaming. The one thing that I'm waffling about now, now I haven't uh, actually done the binding here on the neckline or on the arm size yet. You can see the surging there and everything. This this one I folded down and folding down the seam allowance, like the half inch seam allowance, leaves me with this weird peak of green. Do you see that weird peak of green? So I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm actually going to lower this neckline just a skosh and just have it with yellow. I don't know, but at the same time, like there is one little green ear right here past where like the rest of the green is. Though I suppose that could actually be taken away by just taking that in an eighth of an inch, which would be fine. Cause I still feel like it's maybe doing a tiny bit of bubble there. So I 
think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna double check and do a video call with my mom for a second opinion, but I think I'm going to make it so that the yellow will be the top border here. Of course, as it goes off to the side, it does change because of just the direction of the stripes. So up here, it's gonna be more like on the orange, but that's fine. I think it's gonna look super cute. And yeah, I feel like without the weird peak of green, that's just gonna be better. And then I'm just going to bind the arm size with bias tape, just super, super easy. I will wind up sewing it by hand on the inside, but again, super, super easy. This, I was debating about binding with like a strip of the Mickey ears, just cause I wasn't sure how to handle the points because originally it had facing, but I feel like, I don't know, bias tape might be easier on that also. So we'll see. In any case, I think it's super, super cute. I also took a quick look at like the hem length. And I think that even though I wound up making it just a little bit longer, I mean, it wound up being three quarters of an inch longer or something like that than I had originally intended. I think I still only want like a one inch hem. So I'm just going to turn it half inch, half inch under, and I'm just going to stitch that by machine because that's a lot easier. So I'm almost done, you guys. I just need to do the hem, which I am going to let this hang out on the dress form overnight before doing the hem. So I will be doing the hem tomorrow. And that's intentional because you just never know. I mean, this is almost completely straight panels, except for those little places where the panels meet. And we have just that tiny bit of bias. So I want to give it the benefit of the doubt let it hang out there unless I somehow finish stupidly early tonight, which I'm not going to because it's already nine o'clock. So I am going to double check with my mom and then I'm going to finish the neckline. We'll tweak the neckline a little, finish the neckline, finish the arms eyes, and then let it hang out and I'll do the hem tomorrow. So before I get into doing the hem, there's a couple other things I wanted to point out to you, which is I did the binding around the neckline and the arms eyes, as you can see but I decided that for the corners here, I didn't want to mess with like mitered corners. So this piece right here is actually a different piece of binding than this piece right here. Same with in the front. And I just folded, I cut this one short, for example, and folded this one over the edge. So they made a nice little point. And that is how I did the binding because I figured it was going to just melt my brain otherwise. So that looks super nice there. I did do a little bit of like clipping of curves in the arms eye, only on one arms eye, I think. The other one just kind of pressed flat as it was. But all of that is all finished now. Looks super nice. I did get rid of that green there. My mom said that that bugged her too. So I tapered it in just a tiny bit on this seam here to get rid of the green. And then I did cut this down a little bit. I think it wound up being about a half inch lower right here. Since I'm wearing it as a jumper dress, it really doesn't matter. So that's all set. Now the only thing left is the hem. Oh, but there was one other thing I wanted to show you here as well, which was with the gathering of the skirt, I didn't actually gather it evenly all the way around I had gone in and marked on the bodice like where the even gather points would be so like this for example would be one of the seams if I had gathered it evenly but then I decided I actually wanted a little bit less fullness in the front and more fullness in the back so I put it one inch back one inch back here in the front and then in the back where my mark is I'm not sure where it went but in the back that mark is five eighths inches more towards the back. So I kind of distributed it around the back and sides with a little bit more in the back than in the front. I mean, visually speaking, like this is the front versus this is the back. You really can't tell a difference, but I just wanted slightly more fullness there. So anyway, now time to hem. So while I was trying it on to mark the hem, I noticed that the front of the bodice was just dipping a little bit below the natural waist. And honestly, I think I realized this when I was putting together the bodice and then just ignored it. But if you notice right here, do you see this line, how it literally is dipping down? Yeah, so it's very obvious when I actually put it on. So I am going to undo this little section right here and just move the skirt down like a quarter inch at the center and taper that out to the sides to get rid of that weird little dip. And I have also marked the hem or pinned all the hem so I can do that too. But yeah, that just needed attention.
is just something about Disney and rainbows <laughs> that goes <laughs> really well together. Anyway, let's talk about this project and what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. Basically, what I liked about it, everything, I think. <laughs> I am super, super, super happy with how this turned out. And honestly, like it went together so smoothly too. I think this is the quickest project that I've done recently. I started this on Monday. I worked in the evenings after work and today is Thursday and it's done and wearable and wonderful. So that is pretty fantastic. I definitely like that. And I think it's really, really cute. I think it turned out super flattering. I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised about how good it looks with the black blouse as well. Like I really liked how it looked yesterday with the red blouse and uh, the red belt, but I only have a few colors of belts. I have like yellow, black, red, that might be it. And I tried it with the yellow and it was just too much color all over. So I'm excited about it looking like this as well. I'll have to get a white belt so that I can wear white glasses underneath it too. Cause I think that with the belt and the blouse underneath, it really does do a good job of breaking up that rainbowness of everything. But I love how bright it looks. I kind of was sad that like when I was filming it outside, probably because the sun is just peeking through the trees, weirdly, it got really, really washed out. So that is something that is weird to me that it's such a vibrant dress that can be washed out relatively easily. So I don't know, I guess that's the only thing that I don't like about it. The rest of everything, honestly, I love. It's super, super comfortable. I didn't have to mess with a zipper. I can get it on over my head, but it's still flattering. Let me just show you what it looks like without the belt. So this is what it looks like without the belt. I have fixed the waist now. So it's hitting really, I think just about exactly right. The back might be a squidge low, but everything else is hitting super, super well. Look at those chevrons even on the side. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy with this project. The skirt isn't quite spinny, but it spins enough. And it, this is just gonna become a regular staple in my wardrobe all the time. I can tell it is so comfortable and so much fun. And I think this is such a fun way to celebrate pride and to celebrate Disney. And today I booked my flights for my Disney World trip in November. So yay, I have a Disneyland trip and a Disney World trip coming up this year. I will probably vlog both of them. I don't know if you guys are interested in that at all. Please let me know in the comments if that is something you're interested in. And then I will definitely vlog them instead of just maybe vlog them. But yes, very, very excited. I am just so in love with this project. <laughs> so thank you all so much for joining me today. And thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi account down below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Heidi and Sharon. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week. Happy Pride, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!